Hello, I'm Entrilisium and welcome to Mod Light. We're looking at the B9 Aerospace 5.0 mod today. Of course, you may be familiar with 1, 2, 3, and 4, which are all about space planes, but this one introduces a new size module and uh, a number of parts that can be used for larger ships, as you may have just seen. So let's go have a look straight at them. So let's just grab any old cockpit. Now, this is one of the B9 cockpits. It's uh folds out like that. It's basically meant to be like a super supersonic plane. There you have to uh, fold away the cockpit to be able to go that fast, just for sheer aerodynamic ability. Now if we just have a quick look in structural, B9 puts all of the mods into structural by the way, so uh, of course your engines and stuff will still be in a propulsion, but instead of having your fuel tanks under propulsion, your fuel tanks will end up under structural. So the bread and butter of this mod is a very large piece of kit, this. And yes, Shift scroll out is most very, very, very definitely most needed here. Now, if we right click on here, you can see all the options come up. So, this is a gigantic piece of kit, and as you can see, we're currently at one of the corner nodes. Now, because it's got, as you can see, nine nodes on the top, nine nodes on the bottom, it can be a little bit difficult to get that uh, sometimes perfect middle attachment like that. Now, if you want to make it a lot simpler for yourself, you can do so with this mod. Right click, suddenly you see all these things top, top, bottom, bottom. If I disable top 1, 2, 3, 4, all the way to 8, so I go through all of these. can make it very easy. Bam. And that's a great thing. I really do love that. That makes it much easier to be able to try and get these tricky nodes. And you can do the same with the bottom. Now, you may wonder, well, what's the point in this? What does it do? It's just, you know, a 130 ton heavy object currently. Well next tank setup and previous tank setup. So instead of having to have the same part just with different fuel setups in them, the B9 mod allows you to just do this. And suddenly you have an LFO tank with a lot of liquid fuel and oxidizer. Um, if we go next again, back to structural. And there are a number of other ones that do that and you can get ones that allow you to do it for uh, things like RCS. So there we go, RCS. And you see the texture changes as well just to indicate nothing, LFO, RCS. Capacitor. And the capacitor one is just a gigantic battery in effect, which you will need. So let's just get on to the first criticism since I'm up here. As you see, I've used this cockpit to demonstrate the mod with. Uh, it is, of course, a B9 cockpit and it comes from the space plane part. You might be familiar with it. It's been in versions earlier. It's not new to this version. There aren't, unfortunately, however, any sized cockpits that really work with this. So this size is called the HX size. As you can see, HX4U, Universal Module. There aren't any HX crew cabins or bridges as you'd want to call them. There are going to be, in fact, this module right here, let's just flip him over, is going to become or going to have a friend who will be a actual whole command bridge. Uh, you, if you just imagine this with like a wraparound window along there, and then Kerbal sitting inside at positions, a bit like, you know, like the Bridge of the Enterprise or something. Uh, that's effectively what will happen, but that is not slated to be released until the 5.1 release of B9. Until that point, there are actually no uh, HX-sized bridges or command pods of any kind, and you basically have to hide maybe a probe core or something, which is what I've done in most of my ships with this. Um, so that is one criticism, so let's just keep going. By the way, if you want insane amounts of power, you can do so. Bam! The HX1U Universal Module turns into a gigantic capacitor. Uh, just ridiculous amounts of power if we just read that. That's uh, it's more power than you'll mostly ever need. But if you, of course, want ridiculous power generation, and trust me, you'll need it for what I'm going to mention next after this, you can use this reactor, which has got a nice little animated effect there. Pretty nice. Let's get rid of that. Now, how do you get all this to orbit? Well, it's very futuristic sort of sci-fi parts. How do you get something like this to orbit? Well, we're a futuristic engine, and this is where we get the HX HPD heavy propulsion device. Ta-da! Now, this acts as a kind of dual mode uh, plasma thruster and engine, I guess. So this first mode like this will give us a lovely blue flame if you right-click it, you will see that it has mode, closed cycle. Now, closed cycle, it gives the most thrust, but it also uses a lot of fuel. So it uses liquid fuel and oxidizer like that and uses a lot of it. But it will give you a lot of thrust. Now, if you, say, you wanted to conserve your thrust and be able to get a really good ISP, 
you can go on to the second mode. So if we toggle mode here, hybrid plasma. Now hybrid plasma doesn't have anywhere near as much thrust, but it has a much better ISP. So if you're in, say, vacuum, you want to be using hybrid thrust. But hybrid thrust requires a lot of power, so you'll need to be using you know, the generators and the capacitor bank that we showed earlier. And that's a great way of being able to have a dual mode engine, and it does actually show up when you use this engine in hybrid thrust. The flame will be a sort of a pinky red, and when you, well it's not a flame, I guess it's a plasma, but when you switch over to closed cycle, it will give off a lively sort of blue discharge, which is kind of nice. Now, there are a couple of modules I'm not as fanboyed about. Um, now, there is this. It's kind of a, a squished version, if you have a look at it. The HXOV universal module. Now, the only two that I can really see that fit this are that and this end piece. And honestly, I'm not sure what to make of this size. Um, you could stick it on the edge of something and have it like be a fin or something, but it can't actually do anything in and of itself. I mean, these are the only uh, two... Well, there we go. The only two modules that really uh, exist for this size. And it would be nice to have a couple of uh, things where, like about this size of hull so you could actually use these things a bit more. I think that is one of the downsides of the B9 pack is that, uh, well, they kind of, most of the stuff works off its own size class and it can lead to, you know, mismatches between vanilla parts and B9 parts and also some parts like this are kind of left out by themselves, which is a bit of a shame. However, it does allow you to do some cool things and we'll just end with the last thing in the VAV we're going to talk about is this. Big and empty. It's basically for carrying around planes and so on. So if we right click it, you can see all the normal top and bottom things. But if you go next hangar variant, you'll see suddenly this side is three. Next hangar variant, next hangar variant, next hangar variant. And you can get these easy to enter hangars for carrying space planes around. And of course, if you think the structural bars are in the way, you can go uh, next support variant, next support variant, next support variant. Make it a lot easier. Suddenly you can have a nice hangar that's easy to get in and out of. And you can you know put a couple of these below it and uh, switch them over to closed wall. And bam! Great place to store your space planes. Now let's go actually have a look at the stuff in the space plane hangar. A lot of that will be familiar to you, and some very small changes will be pretty damn cool and new. Here we go! Now, the HL cockpit. It's pretty damn awesome. Now let's show you this on a plane. Now this plane is new for this version of the B9 pack. The B9 HCDV Stapledon. Let's open that up. And... Bam. As you can see, it's a one hell of a big SSTO uh, using the Sabre engines. Now these Sabre engines, those of you who do not know, it was fairly a prominent feature of the previous packs. They basically are rapier engines. But they're kind of a little bit prettier, and you can get them in two sizes. So instead of being limited to the 1.25 meter part, you also have a 2.5 meter version, which is pretty badass. Uh, now, if we go and have a look at this cockpit, it looks like a standard cockpit. If we launch it, however, and if we right-click the cockpit, you can see, you know, we can do all the normal things like turning lights on. But if we go IVA, you can see we have a very detailed interior. Hello. Now, there's a lot of nice screens here and a few bars. Now, these bars, you can see there's an abort button there. That can use the abort system in your plane. So if you have an abort system built in, this will allow you to trigger that. You've also got bars for fuel and oxidizer and propellant, which will allow you to actually manage your fuel flow while you're in IVA. So basically, you could fly this entirely from IVA and it would work. So you can also do things like the gears, the brakes. So we turn the brakes on. Thank you for that. Uh, and, you know, you can stop rolling forwards. But if we turn that off, we'll start rolling forwards again. You can turn on your lights. And you can do everything, like turning on your SAS and your RCS from here. And also these screens. So if we turn the screen off, boop. But you can also do things like uh, actually turning on a camera. And you can use a couple of the built-in cameras that are actually built into this cockpit. So if we just toggle between them, so camera plus, you'll see that we have a, a camera there and a camera below the nose. So let's just go on this one. And you can do a couple of things like zooming in and pitching up and down. So if we go zoom, and over, 
we can observe the space center from the runway. <laughs> now this is pretty damn useful and you can also use things like this docking system. Uh, you can use things like RCS off, uh, SAS off from there, although you've got the buttons there, I don't know quite why you need to replicate them repeatedly, but I guess it's quite nice to have them in the same place. Um, and you can basically turn on all the different panels, there are a lot of panels, and you can also use these for turning on your action groups. Glad I don't have my engines on. Um, basically you can play, fly the entire plane from inside here. And it's got a fairly nice field of view. So quite legitimately you could do an entire IVA in this and not have to be fairly constrained by the pretty awful uh, view that most cockpits have. Ooh, the moon. I timed this fairly well. Huh. And that's basically the B9 mod. It adds a lot of stuff. Mainly the best selling point is for space planes. However, the HX parts are particularly good if you want to build something insanely large. Now let's talk about another couple of drawbacks. Firstly, the stock drag model is no longer supported. Well, what does that mean for most people? Well, it doesn't actually mean that much. Let's be completely honest. Uh, it is balanced and it will work in stock. Don't worry about that. It will be perfectly workable in stock and you don't have to worry about uh, any sort of issues arising from it. However, it should be noted that they're saying that the stock drag model is no longer supported because they don't have things like bug reports and so on coming from the stock drag model. They are mainly aiming it towards working and they so on inside of far and possibly near. Near being the kind of beginner's version of far where you don't get the transonic effects. Far replaces the entire aeronautic system in the game with something that's a lot more realistic and a, a fair amount harder, be warned. Near is something that's a nice transitional mod. Um, and they don't really want to hear in effect about any issues coming up from stock. Other than that, it does take over a fair bit of overhead. So there are quite a lot of uh, new models and textures, and RAM in KSP is always an issue. 64-bit is not supported, but only because 64-bit in KSP is fairly buggy. The mod should work inside 64-bit. There is no reason the mod shouldn't work inside 64-bit, but 64-bit is pretty damn buggy. Your mileage may vary. Some people it does work somewhat for. A lot of people it doesn't. Um, so 64-bit is, well, you could try using it, but it's not supported again. And uh, finally, if you actually want to make a bit more RAM, as always, I would advise using the Active Texture Management mod, which allows you to squish down a number of those textures. And also, you can force KSP to start in OpenGL mode, which saves up to a gigabyte of RAM. You can do this by right-clicking on the KSP XE, creating a shortcut, and in the target for the shortcut, just at the end, you add a space, then hyphen, force, hyphen, open GL. Now, to actually get the details of that and get that written down and so on, you can just check the mod page. It's on the advice and mod page in the first post on how to save your textures. Uh, I pretty much call that uh, pretty much mandatory to save your space on the RAM because otherwise you will be experiencing crashes. If you're going to use B9, do those things. Get the, extra ta ac the active texture management mod and also try and run an open GL mode. This has been B9 Aerospace 5.0. Of course it does come with all the things pretty much from the earlier versions, but you will not be able to uh, use them. There is a there's a transitional period where you're going to have to switch over your parts to the new system because the new system uses those toggleable parts. I'm going to call it there. I've been Andrew Lissium, and I'm going to leave you with a couple more shots of this beautiful carrier warship that you saw earlier. I hope you've enjoyed this episode. The mod link is down below. And if you want to find out where the weapons that are on that carrier are coming from, I also have a link down below to my BD Armory mod light, which uh, should answer those questions. I've been Andrew Lissium, and if you found the video interesting, please do like it. It really does help out a lot. And if you're not subscribed, please do consider subscribing. As always, stay shiny.